So, all right, uh, we'll do the, our uh, final review uh, Tuesday next week. Okay. Uh, but uh, some of uh, you ask me questions uh, about when is our final. Okay. So the schedule for the final exam is determined by the university. Okay. So I search that the final exam will be uh, May 13th, Thursday from uh, 5 p.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to talk about the final exam Tuesday next week. Okay. So today we're going to finish the last chapter for this class, chapter number seven. Uh, it's called correlation and simple linear regression. So we often collect data in order to determine the nature of relationship between two quantities. Okay, so here I give an example. A chemical engineer uh, ran a chemical process several times in order to study the correlation between the concentration of a certain catalyst and the yield of the process. Okay, so uh, we do that all the time. Uh, for me, as a concrete researcher, uh, you know, me and my graduate students do that uh, almost every month. Okay, so analyze uh, since, for example, how uh, the strength of the concrete is affected by density or water to cement ratio, or other factors, parameter in the concrete. Okay, so we do that all the time. So in this exam, example of uh, chemical engineering, okay. So uh, each time the process is run, the concentration and the yield are recorded. Okay. And then based on that information, we can try to see if there's any relationship between these two, uh, two parameters. Okay. So for example, the parameter could be, this is y, this is x. If something like this, we can see uh, if we increase the uh, concentration of the catalyst, the yields, yield of process will increase. Okay. okay. Or if we something like this, okay, that means that we have a reverse correlation between the concentration and the yield. Increase concentration, the yield will decrease. Okay. Or if we see something like this, okay? There's no obvious correlation between these two parameters, X and Y, okay? So that is also possible. In some of the case, the order of pair of measurement fall along a street line, okay? Like this or that. But not always. Okay. And then in these situations, when they fall along the street line, uh, the data can be used to compute an equation for that line. Okay. So we can give an equation for that line, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. For example, y is equal to ax plus b. Okay. So we get the equation for that line. And the line can be used for many different things, okay? Uh, for example, we can predict future yield based on that line, okay? So we've done so many experiments and we get a line which can predict future yields based on the past experience, okay? So that's one of the major role uh, we do that. So next time uh, we probably know what the yield will be if we change to another concentration. Okay. The section 7.1 7 is called correlation. Okay. And here I talk about another example, okay. uh, trying to study the 
physical characteristics in human population. For example, how the length of the forearm is correlated with height of the people. Okay, a quantity called correlation coefficient. Okay, so we can use correlation coefficient r uh, to describe how closely these two variables are. For example, how closely the length of how far and the height are correlated to each other. Okay, so we get many data points. If we measure, uh, well, for example, 1,000 people, we measure the length of form and also the height. So we have a 1,000 data point. And then we can look at the direction of the relationship, either positive or negative, okay? And also the strength of the relationship. And then we try to find the line to best fit the data, okay? So that's the name for that line, uh, which we'll discuss in a moment. And here it says, uh, we can only use quantitative data. Okay, of course, uh, you can only use a data with a number, for example, centimeters in length of form and the height. So in the case of height versus length of form, uh, we get a sample like this. Okay. And we can see that there's a positive association between the height and the form length, okay? Uh, which means uh, the taller man with higher height, uh, typically will have a longer form. So we have a positive chain. And the slope is also roughly constant. Okay, so the slope, the line uh, doesn't change. So we, are, we have a straight line. So the point cluster along the street line. Okay. And the name for that line is called least squares line. Okay. So why we call that least squares line, uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. And we need another parameter, uh, which is the degree to which the point in that scatter plot tend to cluster around that uh, street line. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, in other words, the strength of the linear relationship between X and Y. Uh, for example, the height versus the form length. Okay. And uh, the parameter is called correlation coefficient. Uh, it is numerical measurement of the strengths of that linear, linear relationship between the two uh, parameters. Uh, we can use letter R to describe correlation coefficient. Okay, so how we can calculate R? Okay, so here shows how we can cal calculate the correlation coefficient R. So let's see if we have uh, many data points, x1, y1, okay. For a sample I term, we measure two things, for example, height and the form length. So that is x1, y1. When we have n samples, we have n pairs of data, okay. And then we can calculate the mean value for x and also the mean value for y, as well as the data, uh, standard deviation for x and y. And then we can calculate the z-score. Okay, uh, we are very familiar with z-score now. No. Okay, so we use that for chapter four, uh, then for chapter five and chapter six. So the z-score is uh, the sample value minus the mean value divided by the standard deviation. So we calculate z-score for x and y. And the equation for R, correlation coefficient, is this. Okay, so this is one of the equation for R, which we can see is a function of uh, xi, 
yi and the mean value for x and y as well as the standard deviation. So this part is the, the z score for x, i, and that part is the z score for yi. Okay, and uh, we divide by the sum of this by n minus one. Okay, because uh, this is for, uh, we use a sample to describe the whole population. Uh, R has another equation. Okay, uh, we'll get the same results. Okay, again, it's a function of xi, yi, sample mean, and the sample size. So this is how we calculate uh, correlation coefficient. And here are some of the comments about R value. Okay, so the correlation coefficient R, okay, so can be calculated for any set of points, okay, uh, based on typically a random sample from a population of points. Okay, so if we calculate the R value based on a random sample, then uh, correlation coefficient uh, will be called sample correlation. Okay, because this is a calculated based on uh, a set of sample. Okay, so sample correlation is estimate of the population correlation. Okay. And the range for R is between uh, minus one to positive one. Okay, so the positive value of R means uh, the least square line has a positive slope like this. Okay. okay, so this means if we increase the value of x, the y will also increase. So we have a positive slope. A negative value of r indicate that the least square line, which is this line has a negative slope, something like uh, this. So the greater value of one variables, we increase x, y value will be less. Okay, so r could be either positive or, or negative, but the range is between negative one and, uh, and one. The more facts about r, so the value of r closer to uh, minus one or one, indicate a stronger uh, linear relationship. Okay, for example, uh, the data points, okay, the data points closer to that least square line, uh, the R value for this case, uh, maybe around let's say 0 0.9. Okay. For this case, the data point is more scattered, wider along this square line. So the R value for this case uh, may be, for example, 0 0.5. Okay. So R value closer to negative one or positive one indicate a strong, stronger linear relationship. Okay. Although R value close to zero uh, will indicate a weak uh, linear relationship, okay. And when R value is equal to minus one or positive one, so that means all the points, all the data points are exactly on that line, okay. Uh, which is the seldom the case. So if the points lines exactly are horizontal or vertical line, like this, horizontal or vertical, okay, then uh, the R value in that case is, uh, is called un, undefined, undefined. Okay. But doesn't mean there are, there's no 
relationship between these two variables. We just call that undefined. Okay. And if our value is not equal to zero, then we call X and Y correlated. If they are equal to zero, uh, we call that uncorrelated. Uncorrelated. Okay. So in the scatter plot of height versus the forearm, in this case, okay, so the R value in this case is around 0 0.8. Okay, so this is how close the data points to that uh, least square line. So our value is 0.8. Uh, I will see pretty strong uh, linear relationship between these two parameters, the height and the form. Okay, so the closer far to one or minus one, the stronger the linear relationship. And uh, we can also know that uh, the R is a union list. So that's a no unit for that. Okay, it's just a pure number. Okay, uh, we can see that based on the equation for R. So that's a no unit for R. And uh, R will remain unchanged under one of these three operations. Okay, uh, number one. Multiply each value of the variables for, by a positive constant. Okay, for example, okay, so if x and y is like this, okay, then we multiply apply x times two, okay, then the data point will be like this. Okay, and our value will remain unchanged. Okay, or we add a constant to each value of one add variables. Okay, for example, uh, if uh, in these two cases, x1 and x2, if x2 is equal to x1 plus 10, so we move every data points horizontally by 10, then our value doesn't, doesn't change either. Or if we interchange X and Y, so X become Y and Y become X, then our value uh, doesn't either change. Okay, so R will remain not changed under this situation. Okay, and if R equal to zero, uh, you know, we call that uncorrelated. But that does not imply that there's no relationship between X and Y. Uh, just means there's no linear relationship between X and Y. Okay. And in chapter seven, we all talk about linear relationship. Okay. So more truths about R, uh, you know, outlier, uh, which means uh, the sample value which are much larger or much smaller than the remaining of the sample items. Okay, so outliers can greatly distort our value. Okay, uh, especially when we have a small number of sample. Okay, and finally, let's read this. Okay, so correlation is not causation. Okay, so here give a reason. Uh, what is causation? Means uh, uh, two things correlated to each other doesn't mean one thing caused the change for another thing. Okay, so uh, for example, vocabulary size is strongly correlated with the shoe size. Okay, uh, but this is because both of these two values increase with age. So when people get older, the shoe size become larger, and so does the recovery size. But that doesn't mean uh, increase the shoe size is the reason to increase uh, the recovery size or vice versa. So learning more words does not cause 
fit to grow or vice versa. Okay. And this said age is confounding the result. Okay, basically means age is the variable that correlated with both vocabulary size and the shoe size. Okay, and that will result in correlation between uh, the vocabulary size and the shoe size. Okay, so age is confounding of the result. Remember, correlation does not necessarily mean causation. And uh, here shows another uh, example, okay? How we should analyze the data. Okay. So this is uh, about civil engineering and uh, environmental engineering, okay? Starting the grid of absorption of a certain chemical into skin, okay? All right, so rate of absorption of a certain chemical into skin, and uh, we have several parameters. So she places different volume of the chemicals. Okay, so then variable is volume of chemicals on different piece of skin. Okay, so that's different samples. And allow the skin to remain in contact with the chemical for varying length of time. So another variable is the, the time. Okay. She then measure the volume of chemical absorbed into each piece of skin. Okay. So this is another measurement, volume of chemical absorbed. Right. And then plot the percent absorbed against both volume of time and time. Okay. Something like this. Absorb, absorption versus time. Okay. And also uh, absorption versus volume. Right. Okay. She calculated the correlation between the volume and absorption of stands very high R value, 0 0.988. Okay, so almost all on a straight line. So that is something like this. Okay, so very strong linear relationship between absorption and the volume. Okay. And she concluded that increase the volume of the chemical cause the percentage absorption to increase okay, based on these results. She then calculated the correlation between the time and absorption, also get a very high correlation so R is 0 0.987, okay. And she concluded that increase the time that the skin is in contact with chemical also caused the percentage of the to increase as well, okay. So at least conclusion justified, okay. Remember, uh, if we find a correlation between two parameters doesn't Necessarily means one is the reason for the other. Okay, correlation is not causation. Okay, so what we should do in that case is uh, we check other two parameters. For example, we check uh, time versus volume. Okay, uh, and time and volume may be confounded to each other. So think carefully before we draw any conclusion about causation. Okay. So in section 7.1, uh, we introduce uh, our value, the correlation coefficient. Okay. The next section, uh, we'll discuss the line, which is this square's line how we can calculate that line. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, we can use software such as Excel 
to easily to automatically calculate that least square line uh, can give us the the function the equation for that line and it can also calculate the r value and the, the r square value okay but here uh, let's introduce how we can do that okay so the line we are trying to fit is in the form of y plus beta zero plus beta one xi and epsilon i, okay? So y versus x. So we have three parameters here, uh, beta zero, beta one, and epsilon i, okay? So uh, yi is the dependent variables, okay? For example, the, the height of form lines, and xi is the independent variables. The constant is beta zero, beta one, so they call it regression coefficient. Okay, so these are the parameters we are trying to uh, figure out. And uh, epsilon i is called uh, is called error, called error. Okay, so uh, we know the sample values of x and y. Uh, we try to estimate uh, beta zero and beta one based on that uh, sample. So we call that simple linear uh, regression. Okay. So let's say we have a, some data point and we try to use that data point to est estimate uh, these parameters. Okay. So because we use uh, the data points, so uh, the, we have uh, beta zero and beta one. Okay. A small head on top uh, means uh, that is from uh, from a sample. Okay, from a sample, and we call that uh, least squares coefficient. Okay, and least square line is a line that simply fit the data best. Okay, but how we can quantify uh, what is the best? And here, introduce the idea of residual. Okay. Okay. So let's say this is the data point. Okay. And the coordinate is xi and yi. Okay, for that data point. So this is the least square line, All right? So the vertical distance to the point, so if we draw a vertical line, okay? And the vertical line intersect with the least square line, and that point has a coordinate of xi and uh, let's see, yi with a small head, okay? So this point, so for each data points x i y i, the vertical distance to that point, okay, on the least square line is e i. So we call that this distance e i. Okay, and y i with a small head here uh, is called fitted value. Okay, because uh, yi is the, the dot we got, we will draw a vertical line. So that line, line is vertical. Okay. And the quantity ei is called residue okay, associated with that point. Okay, so ei is the residue here, residue. So the residual EI is the difference between value YI, okay, observed in the data and the fitted value predicted by the least square line. So the difference, be, difference between YI and uh, YI with a head. Okay, so that's the residual, definition of residual. Okay. 
And because EI is defined as YI minus the fitted value. Okay, so EI could be either positive or negative. Okay. So the point about the, this square line, the points here about that this square line, uh, they have a positive residue. Okay, because again, residue is defined as yi minus the fitted value. Okay, but the points below the line, uh, they have a negative residue, negative yi. Okay, that means for this point beneath the least square line, uh, if you calculate the e, ei, uh, that will be negative because again, yi in that case will be less than the fitted value. So we have a negative value. And closer the residue to zero, the closer to the fitted line, okay? So when the point is on the, this square line, the residue will be zero, okay? So the closer the residue to zero, the closer the fitted value to the observation and better the line fits the data. Okay, so here comes the least square line. It is the one that minimized the sum of the square residue. Okay, because the square residue could be a positive and negative. So we do that square. So this square line is a line that can minimize the sum of the square residue. Okay, so that is why we call that least square line, squares line. That's how the name comes, okay? So let's align best fake letter data points. They have at least a uh, sum of square residual. Okay, and then how to find the equation of a line? Uh, we need to figure out uh, beta zero and beta one. Okay. The beta zero is the slope of a line and beta one is intercept. Okay. Because based on the equation, beta zero is the, uh, beta one is slope, beta zero is the intercept. Okay, and we can use this equation to calculate the quantity of beta one and beta zero. Again, uh, with a small head is, that means uh, that value is coming from a, a sample, not the whole population. Okay, for the whole population, uh, which is true value of beta zero and beta one, uh, they remain unknown, unknown. Okay. So we can use this equation, uh, which is a function of xi, yi, the mean value of x and y to calculate the beta, beta one uh, and beta zero. Okay. okay. And we can also use this equation if necessary uh, to make the calculation easier. Okay, uh, doesn't really matter for us because uh, uh, in reality, uh, we don't need to calculate these uh, values ourselves. Uh, we can use Excel to easily do that. But we should at least understand uh, what is the least square line and uh, why we use this square line. How we can calculate the R, R value. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. So some cautions, okay. So first one, do not extrapolate the fitted line, okay, outside the range of data. So what does that mean? Okay, so let's see if we have data points like this, okay, and we get this square line like this, okay. Uh, do not try to uh, predict some values outside that data range, okay. 
because the linear relationship may not hold outside that range. Okay. Uh, we should also not use the correlation coefficient, uh, which is again R value, uh, when the relationship between X and Y is not linear. Okay, and uh, if they are not linear, uh, we can also not use the least squares line. Okay, uh, when the scatter plot follow a curved pattern, such as something. Oops. Sorry. Okay. If the X, Y, okay. Follow something like this. Okay, so not clearly not a linear correlation between X and Y. Okay, so do not use a straight line. Okay. So it does not make sense to summarize with a straight line. Okay. So if the relationship is curved like this, uh, then we try to fit a regression line that contains square term. So that is discussed in chapter eight, uh, which is not covered uh, in this class due to a uh, time limit. Okay. Uh, again, chapter seven only talk about a linear relationship between two parameters. Okay, but remember uh, it is not always linear. We can also estimate the beta value uh, using that equation, okay. Here R is again a correlation coefficient. Okay, and this is uh, the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation for X and Y. And we can see that the slope, okay, the slope is beta one. So the slope uh, is proportion to the correlation coefficient R. The least square line uh, can also be written uh, as this. Okay. And here is uh, the fitted value, y. Okay. So this is uh, the mean value for y. And this is the mean for x. Okay. And r is the correlation coefficient. Uh, X, X, and S, Y are, are the sample standard deviation. Okay. So based on this, uh, we can see the line uh, will pass through the center of the mass. Okay. The center of the mass, uh, which is the point of this. Okay. And the slope of that curve is, is this part. Then let's talk about R uh, in more details. Okay. The goodness of the fit uh, is quantity that measure how well the, the model explain a given set of data. Okay. So that's the square, the quantity R square. Okay. So the R square is uh, the square of the correlation coefficient R. Okay. Um, there's a name, another name for this uh, R square uh, it is coefficient of determination. Okay. And it has the equation for that, correlation of determination. 
it is a function of x i, uh, you know, uh, y y i, and the mean value, the fitted value. Okay. And let me draw this value in the uh, scatter plots. Help us to remember. Uh, what does this parameter mean? Okay. For data points here, okay. For these data points, xi, yi, okay. So this square line is here. If you draw a vertical line here, uh, the distance here, okay. and that data point is here, xi, yi, fitted value. Okay. And the distance between these two points is yi minus the fitted value i. So that is this part, okay, yi minus, uh, not, not here, this part. Okay. And if we draw a horizontal line, okay. so this line we call that y equal to the mean value of y, okay. And distance, the vertical distance between this point and the line of y equal to the mean value, okay. So that is yi minus mean value of y, okay. So that is, uh, This part. Okay. And the sum of square, okay, this is the sum of y minus the fitted value yi. So that is this part. Okay. So we call that sum of square. Uh, let's measure the overall spread of the point around the least square line, okay, which is uh, this line. Okay. And uh, this part, uh, which is the sum of yi minus uh, the mean value of y, okay, uh, is called, uh, sorry, it's called total sum of square. Okay, so total sum of square measure the overall spread of the points okay, around the line y equal to the mean value of y, which is uh, which is this line. Okay. And the difference between these two quantities. is called regression sum of square. Okay. And we measure a reduction in the spread of point obtained by using the least square line uh, rather than y equal to y equal to mean value of y. Okay. So it's kind of complicated. That's different names for uh, different sums. Okay. Uh, The coordination of determination R square, okay, so express the reduction as a proportion of the spread around one, y equal to the mean value of y. Okay, so that is based on, uh, clearly based on the equation for R square.
And finally, it says uh, the following relationship holds. Okay, the total sum of the square. The total sum of square is uh, this part. Okay, is equal to the regression sum of the square. Okay, which is this part, the third part. Okay, plus the error sum of squares. Which is the first part, okay? Because uh, the first part plus the third part uh, will equal to the second part, okay? So, uh, okay. just remember uh, the R square uh, is the square of uh, the correlation coefficient. Uh, that's the check of the good of fit. Uh, how the data point uh, fit around the, the scatter plot. Okay. And the details of R square equation uh, is explained in these two slides. Okay. So that will be no calculation question for chapter seven, uh, but you will be, uh, you know, required to understand uh, what is R means, uh, what is R square means, uh, what is this square is calculated this up. So that's the end for chapter seven. Okay, so we discuss the correlation between two set of data points. Okay, and uh, one of the relationship is a linear uh, relationship, uh, which is covered in chapter seven. Okay, uh, and we also discuss what is this square line and how we can calculate uh, the parameters of beta zero and beta one, okay, and what is r uh, and what is r square, okay, and what does this mean? These two parameters mean, okay. So that's the end for chapter seven, and uh, which is our last formal lecture for this class, okay. So uh, any questions?